Werfel dropping back to throw. Pops and fires the ball over the middle. It's Dory! It's Dory! It's Dory! Georgia rivalry was something that was very special to me. Uh, having grown up a Gator during the 80s, um, I was tormented by the Bulldogs as a kid, whether it was you know, Lindsey Scott catching that ball from Buck Ballou to break our hearts in, in 1980, or Herschel Walker you know, beating us 44 nothing. Always seemed like we could never get over that Georgia hump. And uh, when Coach Berger came to Gainesville, he said one of the most important things for Florida as a, as a program is to beat Georgia. If we're gonna be SEC champions, if we're gonna be uh, a team that can compete nationally, we gotta get past Georgia. So that was a point of emphasis. And obviously we know what the record was like during the 90s, Coach Spurrier's record overall. But I was one of the few guys that had an opportunity to play against Georgia in Jacksonville, here in the swamp, and then between the hedges in Athens. And um, my senior year going up to Athens, uh, we put it on him pretty good. In fact, that was the game that, that Coach Furrier, I think, called a trick play late in the game to score, uh, to make it 52, uh, because he knew nobody had ever put 50 on the Bulldogs between the hedges. So that was kind of a, a cool experience. But yeah, in that, in that game, I caught, I caught five touchdowns in the first half. Three of them counted, but on the same drive. Wasn't exactly the same play. Uh, I called a, caught a, a pass uh, that they ended up calling back because of a holding penalty. Came back, I think, the next play. Um, another penalty called that one back after I caught it. And then finally, the third time was a charm. It, it counted. And um, maybe the best feeling for me coming out of the locker room in the second half and seeing all the red and black gone and just orange and blue remaining in the stadium. Uh, on my way out, I took a little piece of the hedges with me that I still have at home. So uh, of all the teams that are big rivals of Florida's then and now, that Georgia, Georgia game was always really special to me. I don't know if it's still the same way, but um, you know, one of the things that we did as students, on your way to class, you know you're gonna be bored sitting in there. You open the orange box and pull out a copy of the, uh, the alligator. And uh, that's what we did. We, we passed the time in class reading the alligator. Um, I think the thing that was always, as I started playing more, you know, if there were times that they were mentioned to me or God forbid they put a picture in, I'm gonna leave that out on my desk so people make sure that they know, you know, the guy in the picture is the guy that's sitting here at the desk. So uh, I was not one of the guys that you probably look at and, and know, you know, immediately he was a football player. Um, in fact, after I caught that pass against Kentucky, I remember coming back into campus that, that, uh, that first uh, Monday, Tuesday, I remember, you know, there's articles uh, about me and people quoting things about me, which was uh, really weird to have that kind of exposure. And I walked into one of my classes and my professor was talking about the game over the weekend and what a great story the Chris Doring story was and the commitment and perseverance. And he had no idea I was even in his class. So it was uh, it was kind of a, a, a overnight change from anonymity to, to somewhat of uh, a guy that was, was recognized and had some notoriety around campus. And, and the alligator was, was was uh, you know one of those those forms of media that certainly helped uh, elevate my my uh, visibility on campus. Please join me in supporting the alligators. They go head to head in the fundraising challenge and battle the red and black at the University of Georgia. Your donation will help ensure a student-run independent newspaper will continue to tell the stories that matter the most to us. Let's show the red and black who has the better fans. Go Gators!